Hold on before you get to the video. Your boy just wants to shout you out and say I appreciate you oh so much for your support and attendance on this channel dedicated to building healthy, happy, and whole biblical relationships in your lives and in the lives of others. What you're about to listen to is a clip from a previous podcast interview I did with a coach and life mentor of mine covering marriage, dating, singleness, all of those things, even the topic that is being discussed in this video. And if you want to see the full interview, click the link in the description and don't forget to check it out. Catch you up. If you were in today's dating culture, uh, how would you navigate through it? Again, thank you. Good, really good question. I would say that this applies no matter who you are across the board. First and foremost, I'm going to make sure that I know who I am. I'm going to be very clear on my identity as a person. I'm going to have a really good grasp, Sean, on where I want to go in life. Right. So who I am is going to be solid. Where I want to go is going to be solid. Right. And how I envision my future with somebody is also going to be solid. And so my encouragement would be if you have those three things in place, you're going to do you're going to do well because that includes your value system. Right. Um, that includes how you spend money, how you invest money. Right. Where you spend your time, who you spend your time with. Uh, oftentimes people will ask me. Uh, because I am a certified life coach, people will ask me, like, how do how do you know that this is the right decision for you to make and whatnot? Well, a lot of my decisions don't have to come through me spending multiple days in prayer. A lot of my decisions come from understanding who I am. And because I understand who I am, when something comes to me, Sean, that is not in line with who I am, I automatically know this is not for me. That's typical for me. So my encouragement would be for people is to know those things, who you are, right? Identity, understand where you want to go in your life. If you want to achieve something, understand that you're on the track to achieve that. This is, this is the other thing that I would tell you. If you meet somebody and you feel like this person matches you, you guys, you, you're attracted to each other, spiritually speaking, you're compatible, right? You, you, you have this thing vibing and jiving with you. Here's the thing, and I told this to all of my children, only one of them is not married. She gets married a year from now in October. I, let me, August, I'm sorry. Let me, let me say this to you. I said this to them and I'll say this to everyone. Make sure that where you're going you don't have to get off of that track to accommodate the other person. Because if you're, if you two say we're good, then you have to have enough capacity in your life to accommodate the other person's dreams. This is, this is, to me, this is one of the bigger pieces, man, is when somebody has the ability, Sean, to be able to accommodate the other person's dreams while, while doing theirs on both sides. If you don't have that, and you got to tell this person, I'm going to need you to get off of your track to get on my track. No, no. I think this is the wrong thing. I think that when two people meet and they're going somewhere, you should have enough in you to say, what are your dreams? How can I support that? And they vice versa. What are your dreams? How can I support that in you? When we have that, Sean, we really have something special. We really have something that's important. My wife let me do ministry. When I say let me, she understood what I was built for. So I did ministry while I supported my wife medically, right? And the stuff that she needed to do. We did both of those things side by side while raising our children, while going to soccer games, dance recitals, right? Um, uh, kindergarten plays, high school plays, uh, running track, uh, soccer games. We did all of it. The other daughters of church, we did all of it. We were at football games, didn't even have a son on the football team, but she was out there, hey, bust it, bust it, bust it. We was out there doing this. We we were there in the stands. You, you, you have to not try to make the person quit who they are to fit into your life. If you have to do that, you're probably in the wrong space. So my encouragement is know who you are, let the other person be who they are, and let your value systems and your shared experiences to build something together be the thing that leads you and guide you. And don't neglect the Holy Spirit's tug on you when you feel like this isn't right. And you just be like, mm, I, but, but I, I'm just, I'm, let me ask my other friend to see what they got to say about this. 
when the spirit of God is dealing with your heart and telling you this is the wrong thing, I think it's time to let that go. I think it's a good place to let that go because too many people ignore this unction that comes from the Holy Spirit who starts to deal with them, man, and starts to deal with their heart. And they go, yeah, but I really like this person. It doesn't matter if you really like this person. Do you have that check in your spirit, man, that's telling you this is not the right thing for you? Does it line up to with, again, who you are, where you want to go, right? What your value system is, right? Your dreams, your vision. Do you have the capacity to have somebody else in, in your space that can do what they do and you do what you do, but you guys support each other. And the ultimate end is when we're, when we've accomplished this, then we understand that what we share together is still the most important thing, but trying to change somebody to come over to your side is probably one of the worst things that people can do. That's always never ended well for people. Even if it lasts for a decade, I've watched people come to me in counsel and say 10 years with them, but I got tired of not doing what I wanted to do. That's what I was doing when I first met them and I stopped doing it for them. And the more I kept hearing that, Sean, the more I started saying to myself, this is a big deal. And too many people are jumping off of the trajectory that they have for their lives and not being supported in that to support the other person's dreams and visions. And man, when they never return to it, it becomes problematic. Yo, listen, I've got something amazing in the works for you available right now. If you're somebody who's looking to make this year your best year yet at diving into your faith and allowing it to become more applicable in your life. Never known where to start. You've always been confused. It feels overwhelming. Maybe you feel you don't have time. You don't know how to apply the Bible into your life. You have so many questions and thoughts as to what makes sense. How does it make sense? Don't worry. Your boy's got you covered with the Faith Factory. Click the link down in the description below. And in this Google document, you will find a plethora of resources that are at your disposal for you to be able to grow in your faith. I'm talking Bible plans, content creators to follow and subscribe to that better will enrich your faith. Resources, links, books, all of that good stuff, even worship playlists, something to jam out to as you progress through your day. I really think this can be the start of something good for you and the lives around you by locking in and making sure that this year is your best year spiritually, therefore making it your best year ever. Don't forget to click the link in the description and go be great.